Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Tombstone Tourist. Today I'm at the Green Lawn Cemetery in Roswell, Georgia. While Green Lawn is a rather large cemetery, all three of the people that we're visiting are resting here in the Chapel of Peace Mausoleum. Just around the corner in the outside crypts, we're going to be visiting the final resting place of the two men who were longtime voices of the Atlanta Braves, Ernie Johnson and Pete Van Wering. At the corner of the mausoleum near his crypt, we come to this memorial bench dedicated to the memory of longtime Braves broadcaster Ernie Johnson. Just a few steps down the walkway, on the other corner of the mausoleum, find another memorial bench. This one dedicated to Ernie's longtime broadcast partner, Ben Wearing. Ernie Johnson was born on June 16, 1924, in Brattleboro, Vermont. After serving three years in the United States Marines, Ernie signed a professional baseball contract, playing in both the Eastern and Western Leagues. Ernie made his Major League debut for the Boston Braves on April 28, 1950, when he faced off against the Philadelphia Phillies at Shad Park in Philadelphia. In 1953, Braves moved from Boston to Milwaukee, where he made the move with them. From 1953 until 1957, he made 175 relief appearances for the Braves. That averages out to about 35 appearances a year. As a member of the 1957 Milwaukee Braves World Championship team, Ernie appeared in three games against the Yankees, giving up only one run and two hits over a total of seven innings. In 1959, Ernie was traded from the Braves to the Baltimore Orioles. This would be his final Major League season. But as his playing career ended, he soon embarked on another career, that of a broadcaster. In 1962, he rejoined the Braves and began a long career as their radio voice. When the Braves moved from Milwaukee to Atlanta in 1966, Ernie moved with them and continued his work on Braves radio. In the 1980s, Ernie joined Skip Carey and Pete Van Weeren on television when the Superstation WTBS began televising a large number of the Braves games. Ernie, Pete, and Skip became household names and were three of the most popular baseball voices in the country. Ernie stayed with the Braves as a broadcaster both on radio and TV until 1999 when health issues forced him to retire. Ernie Johnson, the legendary voice of the Atlanta Braves, passed away at the age of 87 on June 12, 2011. When Ernie's longtime broadcast partner, Pete Van Weeren, passed away in 2014, he was laid to rest just a few rows above Ernie here in the Chapel of Peace Mausoleum. Pete Van Reeren was born in Rochester, New York on October 7, 1944. He attended college at Cornell University where he began his broadcasting career by doing Cornell baseball games. Pete got his first full-time job in 1966 when he was hired to broadcast the Binghamton Triplets minor league games. The team folded a couple of years later. He eventually moved to Norfolk, Virginia, where he became the play-by-play -play voice of the Tidewater Tides. In 1976, Pete was hired by the Atlanta Braves to broadcast games on the Superstation and the regional Turner Sports Stations. Atlanta would become his home, and he would never leave. 
Over the next 30 plus years, Pete would work with Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey, and Don Sutton, forming a team of the most recognized voices in baseball. After being in the Braves broadcast booth for 33 years, Pete announced his retirement on October 21st, 2008. A year later, Pete was diagnosed with lymphoma, a disease that he would battle for the next five years. But on August 4th, 2014, the man Braves fans knew as the professor passed away at the age of 69. I think it's only fitting that Pete and Ernie are still together. And if we walk just a few steps from the tombs of Ernie Johnson and Pete Van Weeren, we come to the final resting place of professional wrestler Ravishing Rick Rude. Rick Rude was born on December 7, 1958, in St. Peter's, Minnesota. As a teenager, he attended Robbinsdale High School along with future professional wrestlers Tom Zink, John Nord, Brady Boone, Nikita Koloff, and his best friend, Kurt Henning. After graduating high school, he worked briefly as a bouncer before he started training with Eddie Sharkey, the same man that trained such stars as Bob Backlund and the Road Warriors. His first professional wrestling job was in 1982, when he signed with Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling regional promotion based in the Virginias and Carolinas. For the next few years, Rick continued to wrestle in the Mid-Atlantic area while also appearing with Georgia and Florida Championship Wrestling and the Memphis-based Mid-South Wrestling. In late 1985, Rick made the jump to Texas, joining world-class championship wrestling. For the next couple of years, he feuded with the Von Erichs, gentleman Chris Adams. Then in 1987, Rick signed with the World Wrestling Federation, which is today known as the WWE. While with the WWF, Rick was managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan, who was involved in a number of high-profile matches with the likes of Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and Jake the Snake Roberts. But a disagreement with WWF owner Vince McMahon resulted in Rick leaving the promotion. For the next couple of years, he appeared for a number of independent promotions and even traveled to Japan. After Japan, Rick returned to the United States and once again signed with Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling and another stint with World Championship Wrestling. Rick's final appearance in the ring was on April 4th, 1999, when he appeared on WCW's Monday Night Nitro. A couple of weeks later, on April 20th, 1999, Ravishing Rick Rude passed away of a cardiac-related problem that was attributed to an overdose of medications. He was 40 years old. As you see, someone has nailed a championship belt to this tree that is near Rick Rude's crib, just above his memorial bench. Well, this wraps up my visit to Green Lawn Cemetery here in Roswell, Georgia. Do you have a favorite memory of Ernie Johnson, Pete Van Weeren, Rick Rude? Please leave me a comment.
And as always, if you found this video interesting, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when I post future videos, ring that bell and subscribe. So, for now, remember, life is a wonderful journey. Be sure to take time and enjoy it. Until next time, I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.